Hi everyone, my name is Aubrey Watt, and today I'm doing a tutorial on my book cover, Confessions from Paris, by request. This is a little more fancy pants than my other tutorials, and we're going to go a little faster, so make sure you've watched all my other videos first on how to make a book cover, and don't hesitate to ask any questions you might have in the comments. This is a little fancier because it's a composite image that puts together the photo of the Eiffel Tower and the photo of the girl, and there's also a little bit of fanciness we did with the text. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is open the first image, so... It's going to be the Eiffel Tower picture, and I'm going to save it immediately as my book cover. So, book cover confessions, and I'm going to save it as an XCF file, which is the GIMP file. Now, in order to change this picture into black and white, if you already have a black and white picture, that's great. If, you're, if you wanted to change a picture into black and white, though, you're going to go to Colors, and then Desaturate, and just click OK and it'll change your picture to black and white. Um, now I always want my canvas sizes to be 2000 by 3000 so we're gonna go to image canvas size. I'm gonna unlock this so I can change each one individually and change it to 2000 by 3000. Hit resize. And then I'm gonna zoom out. Notice that the canvas size is much bigger than the picture so I'm gonna zoom out so I can see the whole thing. Now I'm going to go ahead and scale this layer. I want the final size to be 2000 by 3000, so I'm going to go to Layer, Scale Layer. Here I'm going to keep it locked so that the proportions of the picture stay the same, but I want my width to be 2000 so that it matches. And then I'm going to hit Scale. All right, now I want to align this so that it is in the center, so I'm going to click the Align tool, then click the picture, align it in the center, and I'm going to also line it to the top because I want it hitting the top there. Alright, and now we're ready to open our second image. So we're going to go to Layer. Um, let's see here. Oh no, File, Open as Layer. Sorry. And we're going to go ahead and open up the picture of the girl. And again, we're going to have to scale it. So we go to Layer, Scale Layer. And I want to keep it locked and keep the width at 2000 even though it changes the height. And again, we want to align it, so hit the Align tool, click the picture. We're going to align it in the center, and then down to the bottom. Now, there's a little bit of fanciness I want to do with this picture that I like to do with pictures of people. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate my layer so that I have two copies of this, and I'm going to change the mode to Soft Light. And notice what that does here to the picture. If I turn it off and on, you can see that it makes it contrast a little bit more and it makes it kind of pop. And you can adjust the opacity of the soft light layer to be more uh, contrasting or less contrasting as you like. Um, but for now I'm just going to keep it at 100% opacity. And I'm going to go ahead, right click, and merge it down so I just have the one picture of the girl again. Now notice we have this gap in the background, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that gap in. I'm going to go to Layer, New Layer, call it Background. And I'm going to go ahead and hit it as the foreground color, which is black. Notice that this is on top of the other two layers, so what you can do is click and drag it down. Um, I can't, it's not recording. Or you can just use the little arrow to move it down underneath the other two layers. And you can see that it fills in that gap really nicely. Now what I want to do is change all of this to kind of a sepia tone. If you'll notice uh, in the original picture I had it look kind of like an old picture because it was a sepia tone. But instead of doing every single one of these layers changing it to sepia, what I'm going to do is a, a cute little trick. I'm going to right click and then do new from visible. What that does is it creates a new layer that has all of the different layers put together. So I don't even care about these anymore. I can make them invisible. All I care about is this visible layer. I'm just going to call a uh, cover. Now in order to do this, uh, to change it to sepia, all we have to do is go to colors and then colorize. And you can change the hue to be any color you want, green, red, whatever. Um, if you want it to be science fiction-y, you might do a, a, green, light, a green hue. Uh, I want it to be looking like an old picture, so I'm going to go to a, a more orangey type thing, and I'm going to desaturate it a little bit. And you can kind of see this looks like a nice old picture. And then just hit OK. Alright, and that's it for our uh, images. Now what we're going to do is add some text in. 
the text that I used I really like is called Rectman. Um, Rectman Thin, I think, is the one I have. And it's linked in the, the explanation if you want to go to download it for free. I'm going to say that the size, I think it should be about 600 or so. You can play around with that. And I want the color to be white. All right, and this is going to illustrate a problem that I see a lot of the times with text. It has to do with the kerning. Now, I love this this font. It's beautiful, but this is a horrible space coming after the F that happens every single time. So what I'm going to do instead of just having it be confessions like this is I'm going to break it up into two pieces and then merge them together so that it doesn't look so stupid. So I'm going to do confessions and then put this together. Okay. Now in order to, to bring these two together, I'm going to right click on the top one and then hit merge down. And what that does is it merges these two layers together. Notice too that it changed it from text to an image. Before, if I do control Z, like if you mess up, you can just always do control Z. So when I merged it down, it changed it from these text layers to an image layer. And that means that I'm not going to be able to change, for example, the font of the text or the size of the text. Um, so before you you merge any layers, make sure that you have it pretty okay. Make sure you're good um, so, so that you don't have to mess around with the, the text afterwards because you can't do it using the text tool. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and... Okay, and from is also bad, so I'm going to do an F. And then R O M. Move that on over. Okay. And then the F and the R O M, I'm going to go ahead and right click, merge down, so it's one word. And then Paris. And if I was being really picky, I'd move the Eris over closer to the P, but we're good for now. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and move all these text boxes to where I want them. Um, We'll do confessions up here, and then from, we'll move it a little bit closer in. Move the Paris down. You can see that the Paris layer, since I didn't merge any layers, the Paris layer right here is still a text layer. I can still mess around with it using the text tool, but the other two I would have to do using scaling tools and things like that. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and merge all of these together so that it's just the title. I've made sure that my spacing is all okay, and I'm going to retitle this as title. So now I can work with just this one layer that has the entire title in it. Um, what I'm going to do is use the rotate tool to rotate it. So the rotate tool is over here, and you just click on the layer. And you can either move the angle here. What I like to do, though, is click and then drag it up or down all the way around. I just want it to go a little bit. Hit rotate. And so that's a, a neat little tool that makes your text uh, look a little different. Another thing you could do if you didn't want to just rotate it, I'm going to control Z and get back to where we started from, is to use the perspective tool over here. And the perspective tool is very interesting because it allows you to move every corner of the box to wherever you want it. So for example, this is kind of a cute little thing. If you wanted it to be kind of like the Star Wars scrolly text, you could move the top boxes inside and the, the bottom boxes outside so that it's now kind of the scrolly text from Star Wars. Uh, I'm going to control Z though because I don't really like that. Um, or, for example, here, I moved my box down and up a little bit, and then up, and you can kind of see where the text is moving to underneath, so you can gauge it from there. And this is a bit more than I normally do, but just to show you what it can do. So it makes the text look a little bit more dynamic, um, and it just kind of makes the text pop out a little bit and make it more interesting. The last thing I'm going to do here is go back to my text tool, change the color back to black, um, and I want the size to be a little bit smaller for this, and put in my author name down here. Okay. So there you have it. It's kind of a, a fancy pants book cover. I'm going to go ahead and save it. 
Now if you wanted to save this as a JPEG, you'd want to right click, flatten the image, and then do File, Save As, and then just change this to save it as a JPEG. Save. And there you have it. Hopefully this will help you to make more Fancy Pants book covers. Alright, thanks. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.